report. So then I asked the question, how much are we writing off every year? And if you want to go back to 1999, how much have you written off of 99 moving forward? And that's where you got to $24 million. And so whatever your subliminal question or whatever um, you're trying to find out, then you need to talk to the city manager on that. But this council has never approved any write-offs or never seen any write-offs. Thank you, Councilman. I think we're drifting a little bit off of the motion and the second that we have on item uh, 11 on the agenda. Is there any additional discussion on the uh, motion on the floor? I just want to bring something to the council's attention. We sent around a revised um, amendment to the resolution related to position, uh, positions for next year. Uh, the amendment includes the director of business and collection services. The one that you have uh, previously inadvertently left out of this. Okay. And this time it's item 11 specifically. Okay. Uh, maybe take a moment to read this. If there are any questions regarding it, we can address it to the manager and then we can proceed. It was just only that one that was added to what was already being already seen, correct? Yes, yes sir. So I guess whoever made the motion needs to amend the motion to include uh, this uh, Disposition, correct? It would include the um, amended resolution. Okay. Thanks. I make a motion that we include the amended um, recommendation. Okay. Motion by uh, Councilman Joyner. Second. Second by Councilman Knight. Is there additional discussion on, um, on item 11? Hearing none, I'll ask for a voice vote. Yes. Blackwell. Yes. Joyner. Yes. Walker. Yes. Aldridge. Yes. Bullock. And Miller. <coughs> <coughs> Council Member Miller. Yes. Thank you. Okay, that moves us to agenda item number 12, she said yes. She voted once, but was, you know, item 11 was amended, it was seconded, and then it was just voted. That's right. Item 12 was consideration of the fiscal year 2019-2020 budget ordinance amendment appropriating funds in the self-insurance internal service fund, $2 million that covers claims expensed during the current and prior fiscal years. Recommended action is to adopt the ordinance. Do I have a motion? So moved. Moved by uh, Councilman Blackwell, seconded by Joyner. This is 12, correct? This is 12. Is there a need for discussion? Uh, I've got a question. Councilman Daltridge. I had this question, and I don't recall if it was answered during the budget time, but my experience with being self-insured, there's a, there's a self-insurance pool fund, and I asked the question during the budget session, how, how, what is our fund value, or how do we fund that, or is it different for the municipality, and I'm not aware of that. If it is, please explain. From the standpoint, how the, how the fund is funded? Well, we each year you fund, the, my understanding, my experience with it, is you fund it every year, and then it, it accumulates. So therefore, when you get catastrophic claims and so forth that can be paid from that, is it different in the municipality, or is that how it is? And if, if, if you do accumulate the funds, what is the value of that fund? So what we try to do is obviously it's, it is more of a pay-go situation. We do, we do in the financial statements, provide the actuarial analysis of the potential, of the potential liability with respect to retirees that are on the fund. Uh, from the standpoint of what we are able to do, and this is consistent with, uh, with, with what the state allows, with what the state allows and requires, is that we do pay for it in the current year. We do have a stop loss policy in place, a stop gap, I believe it's around $250,000 per, per, uh, per member per incident. Um, we do have that in place as an additional insurance that we, that's part of the premium that we pay as, as well as the employee pays. So the, the revenues that are generated to be able to make the expenditures come from the premiums that are paid 
premiums that are paid for the individual employees plus their contributions for dependents, as well as the contributions that we make for, reti for the retiree insurance. Maybe I'm not making myself clear, or maybe I'm not understanding correctly. So in self-insurance, you've got a pool, pool of funds. Yes. And you pay that, you pay into that pool for, for catastrophic events, so, and also for the up to the stop loss, you pay out of that fund all claims. And then whatever's left over, it 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 goes it goes to the next year and it just accumulates from year to year and you and it, it just grows. It should, hopefully it grows. Um, is that not the case in a municipality? Or do we just or to your point, I may have heard this, we just fund it as we need to, so therefore the requirement that the private uh, industry has to to meet is different for a municipality or government. Is that the case, man? That is correct. Okay. That is correct. And we do pay. We, there is sometimes a fund balance that carries over, and then sometimes we have to re replenish that fund balance from year to year. So, so do, do we? Does it, the fund balance go from year to year? And if, if so, what is our balance now that is rolled over from year to year? I, I don't know what our balance is currently. But it's not, it's not, it's not like we're trying to build it. We're not in a position, we have not been in a position, given our financial, given our financial position overall in the community, to be able to build that fund up here to year. Madam Manager, can, can we find out what the, the pool balance is on that? Certainly. But we, I mean, we do have a fiduciary responsibility, obviously, to make sure that sufficient um, funds are in there. To, um, to pay out claims. Yeah, I'm not aware that we're not well funded. I'm just curious what the fund balance is. Sure. As, as I mentioned in the budget meeting. Is there any additional discussion uh, regarding item 12 on the agenda? Hearing a call for none, I'll ask for a voice vote. Council Member Nye? Yes. Blackwell? Yes. Joyner? Yes. Walker? Yes. Daltridge? Yes. Bullock? Yes. And Miller. Yes. Motion passes. Mm -hmm. Item 13 on the agenda is the consideration of the fiscal year 2019-2020 board budget ordinance amendment appropriating funds to cover expenditures for operations at the Rocky Mountain Event Center from April 2020 to June 2020, $251,260. Revenues uh, not available due to closure of facility compliance with required response to COVID-19 pandemic. Recommended action is to adopt the ordinance. Is there a motion? No, no. Motion made by Councilman Joyner. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Blackwell. Is there a call for discussion on item 13? I wonder when we will know whether we're going to get funds that might be applying towards the loss revenue. Yes, um, exactly. So uh, these funds are meant for us to be able to offset um, the expenses uh, rather than the revenue. I guess it's a different way of asking you know, answering uh, that question. So we haven't opened yet, but um, to my knowledge, I don't think that there is any federal funding that will be coming to us to offset um, the loss, other than the expenditures that, that we have still to you know maintain the event center so that's what this is really about this is what you call the payroll protection act yeah, yeah. that you heard about very early on uh, during the pandemic is there additional questions Thank or you. additional questions or our conversation related to item 13. hearing none i'll ask for a voice vote Councilmember Knight? Yes. Blackwell? Yes. Joyner? Yes. Walker? Yes. Daltridge? Yes. Bullock? Yes. And Miller? Yes. Motion carries. Item 14 is consideration of renewal of joint cooperative agreement between the city as lead entity and other members of the Down East Home Consortium, which are Spring Hope, High Tops, Whitaker's, Edgecombe County, Sharpsburg, Principal, Middlesex, Candida, and Rocky Mount. Recommended action is to approve the agreement and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute the same on behalf of the city. 
Is there a motion? No move. Motion made by Councilman Miller. Is there a second? Second by Councilman Joyner. Is there a call for conversation or discussion on item 14? Hearing none, I'll ask for the voice vote. Yes. <laughs> Blackwell. Yes. Joyner. Yeah. Walker. Yes. Daltridge. Yes. Bullock. And Miller. Okay, motion carries. Item 15 on the agenda is consideration of the Urgent Repair Program Assistance Policy, the Urgent Repair Program Procurement and Disbursement Policy, details eligibility requirements for program participants, participants, selection process, and overall program processes. And three, the Urgent Repair Program post-approval documentation. The recommended action is to approve and adopt the Urgent Repair Program Assistance Policy, to approve and adopt the urgent repair program procurement and disbursement policy, and three, to authorize the mayor, manager, and city clerk to execute the required documentation on behalf of the city. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion made by Councilman Knight. Second. Second by Councilman Joyner. Is there a need for discussion on item 15? Mr. Uh, Mayor, what we're circulating uh, earlier today, uh, Councilmember Dartridge asked about um, the approved community development rehabilitation contractors. So this is information that was requested for the time slide of 15. Yes. Uh, excuse me, are these the contractors that work with the urgent repair? Yes, sir. But do we know what we paid um, the contractors to do? To run that program. I mean, to, to do the, I guess, inspections, correct? No, sir. There's actual contracts who are going to actually do the actual physical rehab work for each project. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any additional conversation? Hearing none, I'll ask for a voice vote on the motion on the floor. Councilman Knight? Yes. Blackwell? Yes. Jordan? Yes. Yeah. Walker? Yes. Daltridge? Yes. Bullock? Yes. And Miller? Yes. I motion, do have a question. Motion carries. Yes, sir. Councilman Knight, you recognize? Are any of these contractors uh, minority contractors? Yes, sir. You, you will see um, on the information that we presented there, uh, the MWB. So they were the ones who answered yes. Okay, yes, I see it. At the age of 51, not wearing glasses. Yeah, I see it. Thank you. Item 16 on the agenda is consideration of approval of award of duty sidearms and badges to the following retiring police officers for their dedicated service. Sergeant Leslie Wayne Harrell for 30 years of service. His retirement date was July 1, 2020. Uh, senior, senior police officer Teresa Laster. She served 14 and a half years of service, and her retirement date will be July 1, 2020. Officer Lasser will pay $350 for her sidearm due to retiring with less than 20 years of service, pursuant to city policy. Uh, recommend action is to approve the award of duty sidearms and badges. Move for approval. Uh, Councilman Daltridge, motion made, second by Councilman Joyner. Is there a need for discussion on item 16? The motion will Hearing none, I'll ask for the voice vote. Council Member Nye? Yes. Blackwell? Yes. Joyner? Yes. Walker? Yes. Daltridge? Yes. Bullock? And Miller? Yes. Item 17 on the motion carries. Item 17 is consideration of water assessment contract with Edna R. Robertson for water service at 1125 Freer Drive. It's $265 water meter capacity fees prepaid and $4,000 water main and tap fee to be assessed. Recommended action is to approve contract and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute on the same on behalf of the city. Is there a motion? A motion. Motion made by Councilwoman Biller. Is there a second? Second. Second made by Councilman Blackwell. Is there a need for discussion regarding the motion on the floor? Not regarding this motion, Mr. Mayor, but a line. Um, I asked the city manager if she would in the future just inform us of uh, the fire districts as we um, and its individual. 
individuals in, as well as which role were in the properties and the um, residents. Great. Thank you. Hearing no uh, call for discussion, I'll ask for the voice vote for item 17. Councilmember Nelly? Yes. Blackwell? Yes. Turner? Yes. Walker? Yes. Daltridge? Yes. Bullet? And Miller? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Item 18 on the agenda is the consideration a petition for annexation number 317 4 762 Vestal Road, which is non contiguous. The recommended, recommended action is to acknowledge receipt of the petition and to adopt the resolution ordering City Court to investigate sufficiency of petition. Is there a motion to uh, investigate sufficiency of petition? Moved by, moved, made by uh, Councilman Joyner. Is there a second? Second. Second made by Councilman Walker. Is there a need for discussion on the motion of the floor? Hearing none, I'll ask for the voice vote. Council Member Nye? Yes. Blackwell? Yes. Jordan? Yeah. Walker? Yes. Daltridge? Yes. Bullock? And Miller? Yes. Motion carries. Item 19 on the agenda is consideration of the operating agreement with Duke Energy Progress, LLC, allowing Rocky Mountain City employees to operate DEP system under certain conditions in order to provide faster response time during power outages. Recommended action is to approve the agreement and authorize the mayor to execute the same on behalf of the city. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion made by Councilman Daltridge. Second. 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 Second by Councilman Walker. Is there a need for discussion regarding this item? Hearing none, I'll ask for the voice vote. Councilman Knight? Yes. Blackwell? Yes. Joyner? Yes. Walker? Yes. Daltridge? Yes. Bullock? And Miller? Yes. Motion carries. Item 20 on the agenda is consideration of declaration declaring certain personal property surplus and authorizing disposal by electronic auction via GovDeals, Inc. Recommended action is to adopt the resolution declaring property surplus and authorizing disposal by electronic auction. Is there a motion? Second. Moved by, motion made by uh, Councilman Bullock, second by, is it Daltridge? Daltridge. Uh, is there a need for discussion on item 20, motion on the floor? Hearing none, I'll ask for a voice vote. Councilmember Nye? Yes. Blackwell? Yes. Jordan? Yes. Walker? Yes. Daltridge? Yes. Bullock and Yes. Motion carries. Brings us to item 21 on the agenda, which are appointments. Does anybody have an appointment that they would like to bring before the city council? All right, Jeffrey Cooper. And for which committee? Guess which one? Advisory. So contingent upon um, receipt of personal history and proper documentation, we'll say. All right, I've got um, Councilman Joyner. All right, second by Councilman Miller. Is there a need for discussion on this? All right, I guess the voice vote is what we need. <laughs> so I ask for a voice vote. Councilman Nye? Yes. Blackwell? Yes. Joyner? Yeah. Walker? Yes. Dodridge? Yes. Bullock? And Miller? Yes. All right. So, so we've got this. All right. Uh, Councilman Blackwell, I believe you had some business that you want to bring up here at the end as it related to COVID and wearing masks. Uh, yes, Councilman Miller? I have a nomination. I'm so sorry. I work with Housing Advisory Committee. Okay. Excuse me, Housing Advisory Commission. All right, Housing Advisory Commission uh, recommendation, I guess, pending um, you know, all the you know, approval yes. forms. And, and, and the name of it? Michael Mose, please. All right, second by Councilman Joyner. Is there a need for discussion? Can you repeat the name? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Michael Mosley. Thank you. All right, 
device or voice phone. Council Member Knight? Yes. Blackwell? Yes. Joyner? Yes. Walker? Yes. Dodrich? Yes. Bullock? And Mallard? Yes. Okay, I jumped the gun a little early on the last one. Are there, there any other nominations that uh, we should consider tonight for appointments? All right, hearing none, we'll move on to Councilman Blackwell. We had some uh, discussion and perhaps we'll make a motion related to COVID 19 and wearing masks. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to move that um, the city of Rocky Mount adopt a stance um, that requires all citizens, when they are in public places and restaurants and gathering places, to wear masks, um, similar to uh, the Raleigh board. Others in our surrounding area. Okay. All right, second. Uh, no, let me interject. To, to adopt an ordinance, you've got to have it in writing. So okay. we, have, we have to bring it back. Okay. 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 Fair enough. So, should we make that statement for the record? We have a second, and then we'll have it in writing. We'll, we'll make sure it's on the agenda in the next week. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Knight, I believe you also had some uh, some business that you wanted to add to. Um, uh, what I heard um, Dr. Nelson and Cooper Blackwell stating that um, the city would help provide um, technical support and funding um, to um, help in the planning and pre-development costs of black business districts, uh, business matter of zone and development, and to obtain some of the corporate investment and um, to capitalize on this moment. So uh, again, when I asked the city manager three, three, three moments ago, that could we provide that and some funding to assist with that? Um, looking at the climate um, of this racial undertone in our country and how other cities and municipalities are stepping up to the plate and assisting um, African American community. So I would like to make a motion that we uh, request um, at least from $25,000 to $50,000 to subsidize the planning and pre development costs of Black Business Matter Zone and the development to help obtain the corporate investment and capitalize on this moment um, that we're in at this particular time. And this could bring in um, thousands or millions of dollars, uh, something similar to what we do with. Uh, our Carolina's Gateway that we have with North Tulsa. Sir? So this is a uh, really a budget amendment, I guess. I, I, I mean, how should we treat this as a budget amendment? And well, I'm treating it as a motion. Then okay. The city manager could figure out can how figure to it out. That's what, okay, fine. Yeah, cause I, that's right. where I was trying to get with that. Correct. Yes. Okay, motion made by Councilman Knight. Is there a second? Second by Councilman Joyner. Is there a need for discussion on this motion? Uh, clarification to thank you, Mayor. I'm sorry. Um, Councilman Knight mentioned something similar to the North Salton and the Carolina's Gateway Partnership, and so that, that funding maybe I'm confused on that. Is it for a position or is it for studying you know what needs to happen to make that district viable? Or it's it's for funding and technical support, and the city manager, uh, within her authority, will come back and tell us how it's going to how it's going to work. Okay. Any additional conversation or comment? That's right. Correct. Yes. Outside of the budget, so that, that it's okay. yes. Okay. So, is there any additional conversation or comment on the motion before us? Hearing none, I'll ask for the voice vote. Yes. Blackwell. Yes. Joyner. Yes. Walker. Yes. Daltridge. <laughs> yes. Bullock. And Miller. Yes. Motion carries. We'll have that ready for the uh, next meeting. Thank okay. you. Uh, I understand now we have two items that require that we go into special session, and I'll ask uh, the city attorney to fill in the blanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Actually, it's attorney-client privilege uh, session, and there will be two matters of pending litigation that have to be uh, made public before we go into closed session to discuss them. 
The first one is American Entertainers LLC doing business as Gentleman's Playground, be the city of Rocky Mount, pending in the United States uh, District Court for the Eastern District of North Carolina. And the second one is Harold Cox, the officer uh, Michael Lamb, the city of Rocky Mount, former police chief James Moore, former interim police chief Willie, Willie Williams, and police chief George Robson. Robinson. Okay, do I need a motion to go into the special counsel? So moved. Uh, Councilman Knight, seconded by Councilman Joyner. Uh, any discussion? Yes, voice vote, please. Yes. Knight, Blackwell. Yes. Joyner. Yes. Walker. It does. Dodridge. Yes. Bullock. Go to closed session. All of some attorney client privilege stuff. Yes, sir. And Miller. Yes. Okay, motion carries. We're now in closed session. Well, I, it's not as easy as just saying.
So we'll proceed on the reports and the presentations and then we'll get to the voting actions. We'll do another pause if Councilman Walker is not with us. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of Council, first I would like to begin by thanking our Rocky Mountain Fire Department and all city departments for the tremendous work done last week during the flooding that affected parts of our city. As of Friday, June 19, Fire Department crew led by the Swift Water Emergency Rescue Team assisted 92 citizens and four pets to a safe building. Approximately 75 residences were affected, as well as 20 commercial structures, in what has been ranked as the third worst flooding event in the history of our city. I extend my sincere thanks to the City of Rocky Mountain employees who volunteered during the COVID-19 food distribution campaign held on Thursday, June 18, at the Rocky Mountain Event Center. Approximately 500 people received boxes of fruits, vegetables, and other items that will be used to feed our community's families. The support shown for the event was tremendous, and I'd especially like to thank Archie Jones, Director of the Human Relations Department, for the successful organization of the event, as we were able to serve the public in an efficient manner. Congratulations are in order for Assistant City Manager Elton Daniels. The North Carolina City County Management Association Executive Committee has elected Mr. Daniels as the Secretary Treasurer for our organization. He will serve a one-year term that will not only help his professional growth, but also give our city a seat at the table on the state's largest local government professional organization. Congratulations, Mr. Daniels, on your appointment. We know that this is a tough time for a lot of residents with layoffs and furloughs. As a reminder, per the council's direction, as well as a pair of executive orders from our governor, there is a moratorium on all utility disconnections until further notice and late fees will not be assessed during this time. I don't know what it is. If you are having issues or problems and need help with your bill, please contact the Business Services Center at 252-972-1250. The OIC will hold free COVID-19 testing sites at the Rocky Mountain Event Center. Walk-up testing begins Tuesday, June the 23rd, while drive-up testing opens Tuesday, June 3rd. Those tested will need to bring their photo ID and insurance cards. Insurance is not required for testing. Testing days will be Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Registration can be performed prior to arrival by logging on to OICRMHUB.com. You may also call 252-210-9856 for more information. The City of Rocky Mount will not hold its annual July 3rd celebration at the Rocky Mount Sports Conference. The safety and well-being of our citizens is a priority, and holding a mass gathering during the COVID-19 pandemic is not advisable per state and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention guidelines. We wish our citizens a safe and enjoyable time as they celebrate the upcoming holiday. Also of note, Downtown Live and Lawn Chair Theater events are postponed until further notice. Thank you, Madam Manager. I have. Okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. As a reminder, the Parks and Recreation Department began its pair of annual summer camps this morning. The sessions are open to children ages 5 through 12 and will be held at two sites the Imperial Center for the Arts and Sciences and the Booker T. Washington Community Center. Camps will run June the 22nd through July 31st, Monday through Friday, from 7.30 a.m. to 6 o'clock p.m. Camps are limited to 50, 50 children per site. Please register in person at the Booker T. Washington Community Center or South Rocky Mountain Community Center. Call 252-467-4925 or 252-972-1169 for more information. 
Finally, during this time, it is important to remind you to fill out and send in your 2020 census form if you haven't already done so. The census will determine funding for housing programs, schools, hospitals, economic development, and much more in our community. You can respond online, by phone, or by mail. For more information or to respond, visit 2020census.gov. Thank you, Madam Manager. Uh, with that, we will move on to item number eight, which are petitions received from the public. Uh, I'll ask uh, Tom and Harris uh, to move to the stand, to the microphone. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, Council Member, City Manager. Uh, quite honestly, I was taken by surprise last week when I read in the local paper about the utility charge off averaging in excess of $1 million a year over the last 20 years. And my question is, or I would like to understand the methodology of how uh, these accounts are written off, over what period of time are they worked, how are they worked, or any efforts made to seek recoveries, because this dollar amount is huge. And unfortunately, with the pandemic that we have now, I can only suspect that write-offs in the 2021 fiscal year may be even higher. One item that uh, I would like to address and find out is the application that would be forthgoing to the Local Government Commission for the Hotel Park and Debt Residential Development. Don't know where it stands, where the application is. It's probably, I suspect, that might need to be updated financially because I believe it was submitted back last August. And obviously the hotel industry has taken a severe uh, impact financially with the pandemic. So uh, I would just like to know where we stand with the LGC application. I've heard this afternoon that it could be a couple of months before it will be put on the agenda in Raleigh for the LGC's uh, review and, and approval. Uh, I would like to know more about that when the time comes because uh, we citizens of Rocky Mount need to take a look at to see if the financials that go along with that proposal are, are conducive to the economic hardship that we are experiencing at this time. Thank you so very much for allowing me to be here and present before you. Have a good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Harris. I realize that I skipped item seven, so I will, I'll go back to that after we continue to hear the petitions from the public. I'm sorry about that. I'll ask Ms. Maureen Mendez to come to the microphone. Good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to the person with the speaker system downstairs. It's excellent today. Last time I was kind of a little fuzzy. Um, one thing I'd like to ask is um, for the city council to please give the citizens that take time off work and come down here to express our concerns. Um, if it is a yes or no answer, why can't somebody answer it? And if I have a concern, um, we fill out these papers with our phone numbers and maybe we need to put what ward we're from so that the representative of my ward could maybe check in the things that I'm worried about. I have tried to call my representative a couple of times and the messages are always full. But anyhow, that's just the law. I don't know who gagged, ordered y'all that you can't say anything or what the heck. Um, <coughs> and I'm kind of concerned about, I read in the paper, um, one of the council persons that was talked about in the paper that has been on the council a little bit longer than maybe some of the newbies. Um, what they said in the paper I thought was very rude and uppity. To say to a new member, um, let me school you. What the hey? We are all adults. I think that was very, very rude. Um, 
and the new council members need to feel like they could be more open-minded and maybe the total council could be a little bit more open-minded with some new ideas and thoughts and so that Rocky Mountain could be a more positive place to live. I, a couple of my friends and I have been think, thinking about uh, when will that $48,000 for you uh, forgiven utilities ever be paid back? Because when you get your hand caught in the cookie jar, you might as well come clean. And I was going to say something about maybe something cheaper to take care of that statue, but somebody told me to forget it. You're already going to decide something, doesn't matter what taxpayers say. Um, and again, please do not litter. I took three and a half hours on Saturday afternoon to clean the spot in front of my shop on 301. And there's three more pieces of litter sitting there between Wesleyan and where you go to get on Church Street. And I don't know what the answer to that is. But thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you, Mr. Jess. I'd like to ask Reverend Nehemiah Smith to come to the microphone. There's an issue with uh, with respect to the black community in this city from some business owners. We will no longer accept the blatant disrespect. Mom's Seafood Deli at 315 Ferry Road will be the first example of a business that we will not have in our community. There will be no three strike rule. You disrespect in any way, we put you out of business. It's just that simple. We've come to the point now where we can no longer take this. And I don't care how many hot dogs you serve us, how many t-shirts you give us, I don't care what you do, we're going to put you out of business. Because not only do black lives matter, black matters, period. And black dollars matter a whole lot. And if you don't think they do, moms is going to be the first example to show you that black dollars do matter. And not only that, I just want to find out who's next. Because we won't stop with moms. There are a few others who disrespect us in this city and we will show you what your disrespect means by holding back our black dollars. We have to do something about this. This is just as crazy as it can be. And it's just like you see George Floyd with a knee on his neck. You have been putting the financial knee on the neck of the black community and we're not going to have it. It's just that simple. And I will, I will tell that, I will say that from the pulpit in, in uh, uh, at Mount Zion. I'll say it on the streets. It does not make a difference. We can no longer accept the disrespect. So that calling out of our names, treating us any kind of way, all that, that's going to cease one way or the other. And we're not going to throw a brick. We're not going to light a match. We're just going to hold on to our money. And we'll see how you like that. So be clear. I want to make sure I came to city council to say this so the businesses will know that it's not a game and that we are not playing because we have played too long and we have been disrespected too long. So that disrespect will be no more. Now, people can take that how they want to take it. But as my mother used to tell me, I can show you better than I can tell you. Have a great day. Thank you, Reverend Smith. I'd like to ask Community Stancy to the uh, microphone. Good evening. Can you hear me? Because I don't want to take a mess off. All right. Um, Camilla Stancy, 127 Midway Lane, Tarboro, North Carolina, 27886. P.O. Box 1391, Pine Tops, 27864. I stand before you today, I've been, I haven't been here in a while. One reason why is because of, of the uh, pandemic, but also I get sick of folks talking about I don't live in Rocky Mountain. I've been working here for 33 years and been more active involved in Rocky Mountain politics than, than some of those who are running their mouth. But um, I just want to say 
that the audit, maybe some folks can't comprehend. If they, 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 these special folk, they start out to get an audit done. It was completed. She did her findings. You all responded. She said she was done. So why do you, and I'm going to say you, you know who I'm talking about, still speaking on the subject? She said she turned over the agencies. So what part of that picture you don't understand? All of you are intelligent. So why don't you leave it alone? I was looking at WHIG TV this morning, and I get sick of the division. Only thing they're doing is, 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 is uh, promote division and these uh, websites, right now, concerned citizens. You all have the opportunity to, steal them, to tell them to shut it down. But no, you are all, some of you are on social media promoting it, asking other folk on the council with you to prove themselves. We need to stop it. I'm concerned about what about. Like I said, I've been here, I can't read it. Mr. Rose probably the longest two in here. So I'm going to continue. I've been working over here 33 years. I am a voice for the people. I have family and friends. And you'd be surprised who else I have over here. But that's none of anybody's business. But um, WHLG TV and all these folks, shut it down. And the monument needs to go. I served on the Rocky Mount Human Relations Commission. We paid for a $40,000 study. We did the study. Why are they still talking about that? These special folks need to understand they don't run anything. You all was elected, whether they like it or not. They need to start respecting you all. And because this, this board is a black majority, well, they need to get over it. They got a problem with it. They got to do what they tell us to do, go somewhere. But I ain't, I, I ain't been nowhere for here, and I ain't going nowhere. So I stand before you today to tell you all, the board members, to talk to the folk in the community and tell them they need to go away. They not create enough division. Let them rock, rock them out and move forward. Talking about people ain't coming, businesses ain't coming. People coming every day. Help shut them down yourself. Tell them to just quit. So Rock them out can continue to move forward. They're moving forward and doing a great job. Being followed across the nation. I commend this board for doing what you do. Continue to work together. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Thank you. I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Cooper Blackwell to the microphone. Um, greetings. I stand before you today, um, Cooper Blackwell, uh, resident of Rocky Mount, lifetime resident of Rocky Mount. I live in Ward 3, and I'm a representative of the Rocky Mount Black Action Committee, uh, which is a youth-led movement um, here in Rocky Mount um, that led the protest um, about two weeks ago on March 31st. Um, today, we would like to say that um, our demands have been made, and we've stated the changes that we'd like to see. Um, you all have agreed and come to the conclusion uh, with um, pieces of our, some of our demands um, in regards to the statute and that it should be moved um, with the exception of Councilman W.B. Bullard. Um, the outcome of this protest, which took place on March 31st, resulted in a remedy that some of the members of our council have been asking for for years. Um, approved on June 8th, um, it has been 14 days since the resolution has been approved and within this time, we've seen both people and systems beginning to take the appropriate steps necessary to bring about a revolution. By removing the monument, we are waking up, getting out of the bed, stretching and exercising liberation from systemic principles that were created to divide our communities. So city attorney, we would like to know, um, has the research been complete um, in regards to the legal status of it being moved? Um, if um, We'd also like to know if there has been additional information that has been given to the city in regards to ways to get that done. Um, city manager, um, we appreciate um, the resolutions um, that were put forth. We did feel like some of the language uh, was accommodationist. Um, specifically um, when it talks about preserving the monument. Um, as we know that 
and it's been agreed upon with our resolutions that um, Black Lives Matter and that it's a systemic racist uh, issue. And considering this is the center of it all, having uh, uh, idiom, having something that is um, a spectacle of white supremacy in the center of our city is not attractive to investors. It's not attractive um, to people who wish to um, instill uh, principles of equity within their children. And um, it's unacceptable to agree in any way, or fashion, or form um, that um, this monument should be preserved. Um, so we would, as a committee, would like to offer um, our services to the council as well um, as, as regards to um, assisting with the improvement of um, racial equity within the, in the city. Um, also, we would like to... Thank you, Mr. Blackwell. Yes, um, I appreciate that. And uh, we look forward to getting some more information in 15 days. Um, we'll be in contact. I Thank you, sir. I'd like to ask Mr. Bronson Williams to the mic. Once they got into to the mayor council, uh, I wanted to, to speak today on uh, a number of issues. Uh, one being, uh, here recently we've seen a number of state emergencies uh, from this institution. I believe that since the black man and woman has come to America, there has never been a state of emergency to deal with white supremacy. There's never been a, a cry to deal with the real issues that are facing black and brown people here in the state. So I'd urge our mayor to perhaps look at ways he could work to deal with some of these issues. However, I have some reserve of that because when I look on social media and see statements of proving that someone paid already a written off utility bill, it reminds me of historical contexts in which they would find the leader slave, the one who wanted something to change in society, and they say, I'm going to make an image out of you. I'm going to make an example, rather, out of you. So I'm going to hang you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to rip you. I'm going to do all of these things to you so that the other people can know to know your place. We don't live in America like that no more. At least I hope that we don't. And I hope that the elected officials that were elected by these citizens of Rocky Mount would also show the true leadership and courage not to get into, involved rather into this foolishness. Prove what? It's been written off? Unless there's a, a double standards in which we live in a democracy in which you can write off something and then come back and claim for it and be paid for, I don't know where that happened unless that's what they've been doing to black folks for years and we didn't know that either. Maybe that's what we're dealing with today. So often we talk about getting over slavery, but yet you want black folks to get over a Confederate monument. But I don't understand where we are. But maybe throughout the course of this conversation, we'll finally get to a real place of unity, a real place of respecting each other, a real place of equity, a real place of economic development that benefits not just some folks, but all folks. I just hope that this city will continue with strong and bold and courageous leadership and doing the things that will establish that equity. And anytime I see that you don't, I, I can talk about that too. But I believe that we're moving in the right direction. And, and for uh, someone to talk about uh, what's happening with the status of the LGC and, and, and what's happening with downtown development, I remember being at a city council meeting and this council and manager talked about updating those things. People have to get involved and stay involved. Don't just get caught up in the moments. But get caught up in the real work of changing and reshaping and transforming Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. God bless each and every one of you and every citizen of Rocky Mountain. Thank you, Ms. Williams. At this point in time, I'd like to go back to item 7. I'm sorry I skipped that. And uh, present a proclamation proclaiming the month of July 2020 as the Park and Recreation Month.
whereas parks and recreation are widely enforced in establishing and maintaining the law in the community. Insurance and health for all citizens and contributing to the economic and environmental well-being of the community and the region. And whereas parks and recreation programs build healthy, active communities, today it is the prevention of chronic disease, provide therapeutic recreation services to those who are mentally and physically unsafe. Improve the mental and emotional health of all citizens and whereas parks and recreation programs increase the community's economic prosperity, increase property values, expansion of the local tax base, increase the tourism, the attraction of the businesses, the profit reduction, and whereas parks and recreation areas are fundamental to the environmental well-being of our community. Improve water quality, protect groundwater. Flooding, improve the quality of the air, provide vegetative buffers, buffers uh, to development, and reduce habitat to wildlife. And whereas parks and natural recreation areas ensure the ecological beauty of our community, provide a place for children and adults to protect nature and recreate outdoors. And whereas the U.S. House of Representatives has designated July as Parks and Recreation Month, the City of Park County recognizes. Benefits to rise to parks and recreation. Now, therefore, I see Senator Carl's impeachment by virtue of the authority of this case, Mayor of the City of Rock County, to hear about the plan to one of the July 2020 this parks and recreation on the City of Rock County and all of my policies in the entire great city of Rock County, North Carolina, and to my fellow citizens across the United States, recognizing and participating. Councilman Walker with us in the seat of the cadet. Okay, correct. Mayor Sam uh, Roberts. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Councilman Knight. Before we move into item number nine, got me confused with Johnson numbers, but before we move into item number nine, the consent agenda. Yes, sir. We asked our city manager to give us uh, in this community an update on the removal of the Confederate statute. Uh, not to get into the details, but let our citizens know that it's uh, very sensitive and important and it's uh, an urgency as we see uh, Confederate statues and monuments all across this country uh, coming down and being taken down, some being pulled down. But I think that we deserve to give our citizens a update on where we are I know we're going to have a closed session to discuss it. You don't have to get into uh, the details, but let our citizens know that, is, that we're not turning a deaf ear to this, to this issue. Thank you. Councilman, I think that's more than an appropriate adjustment to the uh, itinerary. Do you have uh, a brief follow-up, perhaps, to provide as an update to your community update? Sure, we'd be happy to do that, and thank you for the opportunity, and as already been mentioned, there will be a um, closed session um, this afternoon following the regular meeting for council to discuss two options that are out here for us. One um, is a group of people who have come forward and expressed an, an interest in uh, moving the monument. And then secondly, of course, it is our interest, the city's interest, to uh, move the monument. Um, both um, do carry uh, financial uh, implications, uh, and so uh, my recommendation would be that um, we have the action taken uh, within at least two weeks to have the monument moved. Uh, the city has uh, spoken with, and we do have a contractor uh, who will be prepared to remove the monument in the event that the private concern is not able to move it within two weeks. 
that you can't imagine. All right, moving on now to item number nine, which is the consent agenda. Um, consent of tax releases and or refunds. Schedule A, taxes under $100 approved for release and or refund by the city manager. And Schedule B, taxes over $100 recommended for release and or refund by the city council. Uh, B, consideration of the following fiscal year 2020-21 ordinances, uh, project ordinances, the Tar River Transit, um, Tar River Transit, $5,613,802 requires management appropriations of $439,892. A, urban transit operating project, $1,409,062. B, urban transit capital project, $949,000. $740. C, the transit system planning project at $43,160. The rural transit operating project, $2,666,200. And the rural transit capital project at $353,640. The rural transit feeder system, feeder pro system feeder project at $192,000. And B, or two, community development. Item G, community development block grant. Entitled grant projects, $526,640, and home investment partnership grant project, $467,205, which requires a matching appropriation of $50,000. Item three is the Coronavirus Emergency Supplemental Grant Program at $121,771. Recommended action is to approve the consent agenda, inclusive of approval of tax releases and adoption of ordinances. Do I have a motion? Motion made by uh, Councilman Joyner. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Knight. Is there a call for discussion? I do have uh, make make a comment since we approved the coronavirus emergency supplement grant pro program. I recognize Councilman Knight. Yes. Um, City Manager, uh, in your update, uh, you did not cover the COVID um, pandemic which is still continuing to plague this city and this state and this country. Uh, some of the council members did mention that uh, we would like an update on that. Also, uh, we mentioned our um, the, the city of Rocky Mount. And this council and this board is going to move towards mandatory, uh, uh, Mr. Joyner, you want to take that on, mandatory mass uh, throughout the city. I yield to council member Joyner and council member Walker. Excuse me, council member. Blackwell, thank you. Yes, uh, uh, I recognize Councilman Joyner. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yes, I uh, wanted to, for our council, Mayor, the city manager to consider uh, recommending public mass in the city of Rocky Mount. Uh, uh, looking at uh, the rise of the pandemic in our area, and uh, it is one way that has been proven to uh, help create a more safer environment. Is there any other discussion on this other topic? Yes, I would like to say. Yes, Councilman Black. Thank you. Um, that, um, those communities that are proactive, I would just think the data is there, the science is there. Those communities and those states that are proactive communicating with their constituents about um, safety measures and protocols and then making available testing opportunities and then uh, creating uh, more than a recommendation about safety seem to fare better as far as controlling community spread. Uh, COVID is not going to go away unless we make it go away. And I, I am very favorable of taking a motion in action, I'm sorry, not just emotion, I'm right? <laughs> taking action um, as a city that we value our people's lives. And if we have to um, encourage folk by you know, passing an ordinance or whatever, saying that we should mask every time we go out in public, I'm fully in favor of that um, because people are being infected. Younger people who are infected, who I don't see masking. Um, might have the disease, are asymptomatic, and have great um, chances of spreading that disease to other people who are much more vulnerable than they. Also, because 
this disease is in the early stage of being worked out. We don't know the science yet of how COVID impacts major organ systems and how the residual impacts of that disease uh, can play out in society. So I am going uh, to say an uh, ounce of prevention is worth an ounce of cure. And I think an ounce of masking is worth whatever vaccine will ultimately be um, discovered. So I, I am in favor of um, passing something that would require us to mask up and protect ourselves. Right, and I think that's probably appropriate to entertain as a separate motion outside the consent agenda. I have a motion to second on the consent agenda. Is there any need for discussion or any additional discussion on the matter before the floor? Hearing none, I'll uh, ask for a voice vote. Yes. 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 Walker. Yes. Dontrich. I want to verify we're voting on as in our agenda, this consent agenda, and not the addition. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Yes. This to item number 10, which is a public hearing relative to the proposed fiscal year 2020 2021 annual action plan for the city of Rocky Mountain and the Down East Home Consortium required for eligibility for home partnership investment funds and CDEG entitlement allocation. Public review and comment period June 8th will be June 8th or July 8th, 2020. Recommended action is to receive public comment. I do have a number of um, folks who wish to comment. So I will call Linda Brinson to the mic. Board of Director, myself, and the community we serve, 
We are requesting that the City Council make a recommendation for producing a proposal in the upcoming RLP for the Public Service Activity uh, August 2020. Uh, the funding amount is like $78,996. And I would like uh, for you to keep in mind that the United Community Ministry gives an essential service provider for the homeless and the poor residents of Nash and Ashcombe County. And we have been providing services for 43 years to Nash and Ashcombe County residents. And uh, on behalf of the on Board, I thank you uh, for your time and consideration. Thank you, Ms. Brinson. I'd like to ask Ms. Lisa Nelson to the party. Sorry, Hi. Dr. Nelson. Back again. How are y'all? Um, I'm here representing a group of concerned citizens that, um, as I stated last time, are really interested in economic development for all of Rocky Mountain. Uh, we reviewed the ratio plan that you guys had several years ago. And in that ratio plan is a perfect example of how development has been siphoned to the Nash County and traditionally underserved Edgecombe County was left out. For instance, the Monk to Mill Trail. The mill's fully developed, looks beautiful. I guarantee you, most people don't even know where Thelonious Monk Park is. But when you go there, it's not even properly maintained. I don't understand how you can even conceive of utilizing the history of the people to enrich the people that usually oppress those people. One of the key concepts of the ratio plan was placemaking, the historic district, the art district, the entertainment district. And key to placemaking is to enhance quality of life, achieve large economic goals, and bring dollars to the area. And the other goal was mitigation of gentrification, which actually the plan didn't even address. Uh, they didn't have any strategies in place to prevent the economic disparities that come with gentrification. So our group got together and we put together a proposal that we would like you to consider. We feel that the Black Lives Matter recognition that is currently going on now, right now, the energy around the world has exposed many of the negatives that have gone along with economic and racial discrimination. In response, there's resources flowing from corporations and individuals, foundations for communities that have been affected by economic disparity to have restorative economics brought into those communities. We're proposing a geographic area, downtown Rocky Mountain, to identify a black business matter zone to capitalize on that energy, which we all know is not going to last. That zone can provide funding to economic businesses and real estate development that will provide business opportunities, will then help bring people in that area more economic power to afford the housing that you want to build. The initiative is an excellent opportunity. It'll develop downtown buildings and infrastructure, capitalize on existing downtown expansions, capitalize on the establishment of new businesses. We already have people moving in from other saturated markets. I bought two of them in myself. Green flows when we capitalize on the rich history of this town, which is black history. Polonius Monk, Martin Luther King, Sugar Ray Leonard, if Black Rocky Mountain rises, we all rise. And I hear the bell ringing, but I want you all to consider funding an initiative to develop a foundation to fund those businesses. If we revitalize downtown, everybody wins. If the, the city council will consider funding the staff, a $50,000 budget, whatever you all think, to get this, you have downtown businesses that have bought into this. You have people such as myself, I'm not a business person, I'm a doctor, but I believe that fixing economic disparities will affect what I love, which is the health of and well-being of everybody. I'll Thank you, Dr. Over my time. Thank you. I'd like to ask Mr. Troy Davis to the podium. Yeah, should I say Troy Davis, 1525 Bedford Road. 
on the cone today because um, last council meeting I wasn't able to be here. I was had a full agenda, but Mayor spoke on uh, recruiting a real developer to downtown, and it kind of touched me. I was spending three million of my hard-earned dollars in downtown Rocky Mountain. And if you don't think that I'm a real developer, I think you need to rethink things. I don't know what classifies someone to be a real developer. Maybe my skin tone isn't light enough, but we need to kind of. I need to know where you stand as far as my development in downtown Rocky Mountain. And secondly, um, I want to speak on the statue coming down. That statue needs to come down now, um, immediately. Every city around us has removed their statue. I don't care if it's 162 tons, I don't care if it's 1,025 tons, Raleigh removed five within three days. It needs to come down now. Thank you, Ms. Davis. Okay, I'd like to uh, remind everybody that the public comment period is June 8th through June, July 8th, 2020. And just in response to the last speaker, I appreciate anyone and everyone who's willing to spend dollars in the development of the downtown area and ask uh, forgiveness for a poor choice of phraseology. That moves us on to item number 11, which is the consideration of the fiscal year 2020-2021 budget have, ordinance and amendments to fees and charges. I have a question. Yes, sir. For the city manager in reference to uh, Ms. Linda Brent Brinson um, that spoke during the public hearing that um, UCM, Ideology, no, Councilman Mike. Okay, that UCM was not funded to 30000 Um I was looking in my notes. Um, I know my sister house was on that. And I understand why that was not funded at that time. I can't remember if UCM was on that list, and if so, uh, how much was they funded, and if not, why did they not? Yes, I would have to yield to uh, the director because I don't have the details in front of me. But Ms. Jones, if you could um, address that question, please. Yeah, that, that, that's what I'm interpreting, uh, Ms. Jones is saying. And, that and, and we will communicate that with um, UCF. Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, second question uh, in reference to the public hearing. Um, Dr. Nelson mentioned about Black Lives Matter. Uh, I would like to uh, ask the city manager if we could give Dr. Nelson and, uh, and the Black Action Network Committee um, some technical support uh, with the Black Lives Matter uh, business district in downtown and also with the funding. Uh, it reminds me uh, when uh, the uh, information came out, Opportunity Zone. So this is another uh, opportunity to right a wrong as far as economic justice and that we know that there are companies, uh, major companies that contribute uh, monies reference to Black Lives Matter and empowering African Americans in, in economic development. And so uh, I would ask or ask this council if we could uh, have a staff person uh, to contact uh, Mr. Cooper Blackwell and Dr. Nelson and her group and to work along with them to create this Black Lives, well, this African American district, which we traditionally have one at Douglas Block, but to expand it and also that the funding that could come up to help uh, new businesses, businesses downtown, and to expand the current businesses downtown, and to locate new businesses downtown. 
and uh, if I need to come back after Mr. Black will make that motion, I would like to come back and make a motion that we would have a staff person to provide technical support to help this initiative get, get done. Very time sensitive at this time. How do you advise, Mr. Mayor? I'd like to take that up at the end of the meeting. Thank and you. If, in fact, uh, it's determined that we need something, uh, you know, sure. emotional. That I'm not sure on this matter that it really would require, since we're just doing some preliminary work, but I'll defer to uh, our city attorney when we get to the end of the meeting. With that said, we've had a public hearing. Are there any other uh, points or comments that anybody else has observed that they feel like they would like to uh, speak to at this point? A point of clarification. Yes, yes sir. Thank you. I just want to ask the, the, the manager, I'm still a little unclear with you, CM, you are saying that we will try to support that $30,000 request. Yes, sir. In some way. In some way. Some, some flow, right? Is this one or something else? That's correct. And we'll let you know how we're able to do that if we're able to fund the full $30,000. And, and the reason I would just want to say it again, just knowing how COVID spreads, one of the vulnerable and at-risk populations that affect more than them as individuals are people who are homeless. So I think it would really be critical uh, to include them in whatever initiative we're doing. Right, and I, I believe this CARES Act specifically speaks to homeless, and so that's why we would recommend the shift in the funding. Thank you. Any other questions or observations? Or? I just want clarification. Yes, Thank you. Um, so UCM asked if they requested thirty thousand dollars, and we didn't. We, we did not fund that because it was going to. They were going to fund it through the CARES uh, funding. Am I, am I understanding you correctly, or did I, did I hear something? Else? Well, you are, and I think um, if we go back to the amount of money that we had to begin with. For public service was something like seventy-eight, seventy-nine thousand dollars. So this is a very small pot with a lot of needs here in the community. So we look for other sources of funding that might assist uh, the agencies if it can't come out of the public service. So that's why the CARES Act funding seemed to be um, helpful in helping them to uh, be funded at the request of the amount. So, so next year when there's CARES funding not available, then they may or may not be funded. All the agencies may or may not be funded, I guess, um, depending on funds available. Mm -hmm. But um, did we increase funds to a particular agency and, and it reduce it to, or is it just um, reduce it to the UCM or was it funds available? I, I don't recall us increasing. Again, this is such a very small, pot of money. I think there are about five agencies that are funded from this money. So we don't have the luxury of increasing um, to, to do that. But um, to your earlier question or statement, you know, next year is, you know, who, who knows what would happen next year. But I would trust that the agency would understand that this is a one time and they usually do consider it one time because you don't really know, uh, you know, what, what might in the future for funding from the city. So they'll get it this year as you know, other agencies have been funded and then next year we'll just have to wait and see. Okay, let's move on to item number 11 in the agenda, which is the consideration of the fiscal year 2021 20, budget ordinance and amendments to fees and charges. A, fiscal year 2020-2021, Budget ordinance establishes appropriations for fiscal year uh, 2021 and sets annual rate of tax rate at 0.685 cents per $100 of taxable asset value. This is the same tax rate as the current fiscal year. Item B is amendment to fees and charges. A1, Department of Public Works, policy number 10.8.5, uh, solid waste transfer station tipping fee. And C, policies and departments of human resources, position classification and pay plan, which includes funding for eight new positions. The recommended action is to adopt the fiscal year 2020-2021 budget ordinance, adopt resolution amending fees and charges listed above, and three, to adopt resolution approving revised position 
and classification plan. Do I have a motion? Motion made by. So moved. Uh, moved by uh, Councilman Joyner, seconded by Blackwell. Is there a need for discussion on this item? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. Question. Councilman Dodgers. Um, page three, well, not page three of the um, We got transfers from other funds of three point three million five hundred fifty thousand dollars, excuse me, I'm sorry, which includes um, transfers from, I believe, the electric fund. Electric fund um, of two million four hundred eighty-five thousand, which is an increase, and then the water fund uh, five hundred sixty-five thousand. My concern, now that who can answer that, Mr. Hunter, um, with COVID nineteen and moratorium on utility payments, and I know we've we've got a huge one hundred fifty percent increase of people that are eligible to have their utilities cut off but due to the moratorium or not which is also an increase of $2 million of, of funds that haven't been paid and past due. My concern is, can we depend on this electric fund? Because we don't know how long the moratorium uh, is going to go on. And are we going to need to do, I, I'm just concerned with, the, with this, it's an increase. And then also, I don't find the addition matching up. I see where the electric and water um, total $3 million Fifty thousand dollars. Where's the other five hundred thousand dollars coming from? To answer your second question first, the other five hundred thousand dollars comes from the occupancy tax, which is not part of the the ordinance. The occupancy tax is a project ordinance, so it will be done during the coming fiscal year. So that's where the additional five hundred thousand dollars comes from. To answer the first question, uh, in preparing this budget, we did evaluate and we explained during the budget development process that. Uh, when we came to the forecasting of revenues in the electric fund, we pretty much had to continue as we had in the past, and we did do a pretty effective job with respect to the forecasting. Obviously, uh, the situation involving uh, the, current, the current environment, as well as the challenges that are associated with the disconnect, but with the disconnect moratorium that's in place here in the city and also with the state, does um, is something that we do have to evaluate. We do not anticipate any write-offs in fiscal year 2021. If there are any write-offs, they would probably be in fiscal year 2022. There's a, there's a, due to the time nature of, of write-offs, if there were needed to be any. And that's when it would affect our budget. Prior to that, it really doesn't. With respect to cash flow, we do have, uh, we do feel like we are in pretty good shape with respect to cash flow. We have been putting money aside, and we also continue to put money aside into rate stabilization, which helps our cash flow. And so we believe we are in the appropriate position to make this request, which is, which is consistent with our um, uh, transfer policy with respect to how it's calculated with respect to the asset value of the electric fund. In follow-up, Mr. Mayor, um, and this I don't know if this is for Mr. Hunter or Madam Manager, but it was mentioned write-offs, um, and it's monitors. Do we when are we going to do utility write-offs? It was mentioned earlier by Mr. Harris. Is it now? I mean, at the, end, the next meeting we have, or when, when do we do that? Well, the staff hasn't recommended that just yet, so I'm not exactly sure when it would be forthcoming. Is it historically then? Towards the end of the year, end of the fiscal year. Which is now, right? Towards the end of the fiscal year, so as you move from one fiscal year into the next one, I think that's when that goes. So probably next meeting will have something? Uh, I, I won't, you know, I, don't, I won't say next meeting, but when it's ready, we'll bring it. Okay, well, next meeting, I think, is our last meeting. Yes, Council Black. So I assume what Mr. Dodgers is asking for is a change in policy and protocol because we've never voted on write offs. We've never, to my knowledge, unless they've been included in the budget. I don't recall having. Have you ever presented write offs, Ken? Yes, sir. So, um, I don't even understand the terminology about when we're going to approve it. That's something that's an administrative um, detailed position. And if you're requesting that to occur, then I think that should be made 
request. And I think we do need discussion around that. Mr. Mayor, may I respond? Yes, please. Well, it, it was brought up during our during the whole audit, and it was a response by Councilman Knight, who to WTVD announced that we do $21 million right off over, uh, I think, 20 years, and then it was posted on social media, and that was news to me. And then it's my understanding that through various sources that we write that off, and I think that's probably more of a question to state that the finance director. Um, if we don't do it, we should do it. And um, and I think we should we should also look at the um, criteria for writing off uh, utilities because obviously we have some issues there. Can I speak? Uh, yes, Councilman Knight. Uh, we never had any issues before, and for the record, uh, this council has never ever reviewed any write-offs. We have never ever approved any write-offs because if that's the case, it could be very political. So I prefer to stay within the finance uh, uh, that in the business office that would. Uh, have the, have that information and to, to prove those. Also, um, you brought up social media, and to you and Mayor Sandy Robinson, on June 17, 2020, Wednesday at 10.40 a.m., it's approved, this is a true Councilman Knight about uh, write-offs of preferential treatment. Again, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Daltridge, I never received any preferential treatment, Never had any knowledge of any write-offs, and the write-offs that Beth Woods included in her audit, uh, whatever the number was, it could not be substantiated by this, this city, this business office, this finance director. And I'm told, if you pull your report, you see something, you disagree, you ask why it's up there, they can't prove it, then it's not yours. So let's put that to rest. Beth did have done her audit. We have responded. And getting back to the write-offs, we never, to my knowledge, ever seen a list of write-offs. The write-off came up in the audit 